Uh, hello friends, uh, welcome to the uh, higher module on institutional management for entrepreneurship. We are into the unit number 1 which is on entrepreneurial competency mapping and business opportunity identification. This is the second part or the second video of this unit and it is on competencies of an entrepreneur. Now before I start my uh, presentation, let me share somebody's life history. This was a man who failed in business at the age of 21. He was defeated in a legislative race at age 22. He failed again in business at age 24. He overcame the death of his sweetheart at age 26. He had a nervous breakdown at age 27. He lost the senatorial a congressional race at age 34. He lost the senatorial race at age 45. He failed in an attempt to become the vice president at age 47. He lost a senatorial race again at the age of 49. And finally, he was elected as a president of United States of America at the age of 52. So, who was this person? Abraham Lincoln. You see so many failures, one after the another, but the person did not give up. So, when you give up, you become a failure. Till that time you give up, you are not a failure, you can keep on trying. So, these are you know like some of the competencies we successful people have in them and that is why they become very successful persons. Now, we shall be discussing uh, the uh, entrepreneurial competencies. Uh, they are mainly three types of competencies. Uh, first is the behavioral competencies, second is the startup competencies and third is the enterprise management competencies. So, let us take uh, one by one. Uh, first is the behavioral competencies. Uh, the first is a very high need for the achievement. That means, the entrepreneurs or the prospective entrepreneurs or the burning entrepreneurs must have a very high need for the achievement. You can see uh, the uh, photo of uh, Mr. Dhirubhai Ambani on your screen. He had a very high need for the achievement. He was working as a, at, a, at a petrol pump, as a petrol filler when he was very young and then from there he rose and when he expired, you know, he was the number one industries of the country. So, very high need for the achievement. Let us uh, try to understand this uh, motivation process basically. You see, uh, every person has got an inner state of disequilibrium. That means, every person has got certain needs, certain desires or expectancies and then he takes some action to fulfill those desires or needs or the expectancies. As a result of that, he gets certain incentives or he gets his goal and he learns a lot of things you know in, in this entire process and then he gets a feedback and this feedback goes back again uh, you know uh, to the inner state of disequilibrium. So, I mean after all these things, after accomplishing a goal, he sets up another goal and then he runs through the entire process and learning on the way through the feedback. So, what is achievement motivation? It is a desire to achieve something difficult, something which normal people cannot achieve, something difficult, followed by efforts in terms of organizing the physical objects and human beings to achieve the goal. It is a desire to do well, not so far, not so much for the sake of social recognition or prestige, but to attain an inner feeling of personal accomplishment. It is a disposition basically to achieve something excellent. So, how to find whether a person has got the high need for achievement or not? So, there are primarily there are four criteria. The first is a desire for success in competition with the others. That means, you are trying to compete with the other people and you are trying to succeed in comparison with them. So, that is the first criteria. The second is a desire for success in competition with a self-imposed stand of excellence. In this case, you are not trying to compete with other persons, you are trying to compete with yourself. So, you have set a goal for yourself which is a goal of excellence and you are trying to accomplish that goal. The third is a unique accomplishment, something which is very unique, not many people are able to you know accomplish those uh, accomplishments. And the fourth is a long term involvement. So, if a person has either one or more than one of these four criteria, then we say that that person has got a very high need for the achievement.
uh, the characteristics of a person with high need for achievement. First, he likes to shoulder responsibility. So, he takes responsibility, he does not evade responsibility that is number one. He likes to take moderate risk, uh, you know taking risk is very, very important, but it does not take very high risk just, just like a gambling. He does not take a very low risk also because there is no challenge in that. He takes a very moderate, intelligent and calculated risk. He wants to know the result of his efforts. He tends to persist in the face of adversity. So, he has got a persistence power or a perseverance power because there will be a lot of adversities, there will be certain uh, constraints, certain bottlenecks, certain problems, but he persists, he perseveres and then ultimately is able to achieve his goal. He tends to be innovative. Uh, he demonstrates an uh, interpersonal competence. It's very important, especially for an entrepreneur to have interpersonal competence because you have to deal with a lot of people, even with your own employees who are working at different tables, then dealing with the bankers, dealing with the customers, with the clients, lot of people. It's very important to have an interpersonal competence. Then he's oriented towards the future. He's a visionary thinking about the future. Uh, he shows tolerance to the ambiguity because ambiguity kind of be wished away ambiguity is there in the system. So, you have to be tolerant to the ambiguity. He tends to be mobile and adventurous. He is not sitting in his office all the time. He is you know he is moving out meeting with the people and he is very mobile and very adventurous. The second uh, competence is the risk taking. This we have already discussed. He uh, the person is able to take a risk, but uh, not a very high risk, not a very low risk, a very calculated, a very moderate and a very intelligent risk. Uh, the next is initiative and the independence. The, the mindset is to, uh, to be independent. He takes independent decisions. He listens to the people. He takes their feedback, but ultimately takes independent decisions and he takes initiatives also. Uh, then he believes in creativity and the innovation, which is uh, you know very important to be creative and to be innovative. In fact, if you talk of the innovations, uh, there are two main types of innovations. One is the technical or the product innovations. That means the product innovations. The second is a business process innovation. So, one in the product and one in the process innovations. Uh, the famous uh, management uh, guru Peter F. Drucker says that innovation is a specific tool of the entrepreneur and business has only two basic functions marketing and the innovation. So, innovation is coming again and again and again it is one of the most important practices of, a, of an entrepreneur. What exactly is innovative process? An innovation starts as a concept. That means it comes an idea in somebody's, somebody's brain that is refined and developed before application. The innovation process which leads to useful technologies requires research, development which means the upscaling and the testing, then the production, marketing and then the final use by the consumer. This is a sort of a mathematical uh, you know uh, equation of innovation by uh, by Mr. G. L. Baird. He says innovation is uh, creativity multiplied by risk taking. What is the meaning of this equation? Uh, this basically means that if you have a creative idea in, in, in your brain and when you take the risk of bringing that idea into the actual market, hmm, so it becomes an innovation. Uh, let me take uh, a very small uh, you know case study, a very small case study by, by a very simple person on how a person can be innovative. Balu Bhai Vasoya from Ahmedabad, Gujarat has developed a stove that uses both kerosene and the electricity. A 6 volt electric coil heats the kerosene converting it into a gas which burns with a blue flame. It saves 70 percent on the fuel compared with the conventional stoves which run on the LPG. 1 liter of kerosene lasts for 8 hours and in 20 hours the stove uses 1 unit of electrical power. So, running it for an hour costs just 1 and a half rupees in total, no smell, no smoke and it burns like a LPG. So, this is a very fine example of an innovative innovation done by a very small person a little long time back. Okay, next is uh, the problem solving attitude. The person should have an attitude to solve the problems because you will keep on encountering problems on a, almost on a daily basis. So, if you have the attitude, I am not talking about the skill, the skill you may or may not have, but you should have the attitude and that is very important. Uh, so, what is the importance of the right attitude? A study attributed to the Harvard University found that when a person gets a job, 
85 percent of the time it is because of its attitude and only 15 percent of the time because how many facts and figures he knows. So, this is the importance of the attitude whether in a job or whether in an entrepreneurship uh, profile. So, the foundation of success regardless of your chosen field is the attitude. So, your attitude determines your altitude. Now, if we talk of uh, further competencies, then we have the persistence or the perseverance, quality mindset, a, a longing for quality products or quality services is very important, information seeking, seeking information regarding his specific venture all the time and then the leadership qualities, very important. A good leader has the capability to get people of ordinary ability to perform in an extraordinary manner. So, this is the importance of a leader that a leader can really you know build a very good team and then the team, team can do wonders. Uh, Socrates once said that a group of donkeys led by a lion can defeat a group of lions led by a donkey. Then if we go further then the person should have a vision, vision is very important because uh, not only in the present times but what you want to do in the future. So, you should have a vision. Then personal efficacy. How, how effective you are, how efficacious you are and this we uh, mainly check two things, one is the goal clarity, the person should have a very concrete goal and activity oriented goal and a personal goal in his mind and the locus of control should be internal. You see there are three types of locus of control, one is internal, one is external, one is no locus of control. Some people are driven internally, so they have internal locus of control, I mean the key of their uh, uh, lock is in, in with, with them only. Some people have external locus of control. So, somebody else is guiding them, maybe their spouse, maybe their father or mother. So, he or she is guiding them. So, they have an external locus of control and some people have no locus of control. So, they have no idea what to do. So, the entrepreneurs they have the internal locus of control. So, they are driving themselves basically. Uh, then the teamwork and the networking is very important. Uh, then we go to uh, the second part uh, which is uh, the startup competencies and this first is the environmental scanning and opportunity identification. So, scanning the environment and ad identifying a, a profitable business opportunity. In fact, we have got a separate video on that, so I am now discussing it right over here. Next is the market assessment. Uh, this refers to a detailed and objective evaluation of the potential of a new product, a new business idea or a new investment. In this, we have to comprehensively analyze environmental forces, market trends, entry barriers, competition, risk, opportunities and the firm's constraints. Next is the project formulation. Uh, you see an entrepreneur before setting up an enterprise wants to satisfy himself that it is a profitable proposal. He wants to gather critical information and take decisions pertaining to various parameters like technical arrangements, plant and machinery, market, location of the enterprise, statutory clearances, so that the task of establishing the project and managing it successfully later on becomes easy. So, formulation of a project report or a business plan is done to check the viability or the feasibility of an enterprise. Next is uh, availing uh, incentives and the support. Uh, you see the industrial enterprises, uh, they provide quality products and contribute to the economy of a country. Therefore, for promoting setting up of the enterprises, almost all the countries in the world have created a large number of agencies or the organizations which are working at uh, different levels like at the national or federal level the state or the provincial level and at the district level. These agencies are offering various facilities and the incentives to new and existing entrepreneurs. It is important that an entrepreneur should know about these organizations and various schemes offered by them. Then we talk of uh, the procedural requirements and then ultimately setting up a unit. The third is the enterprise management competencies. You see once you have set up the business, you have to run the business, you have to manage the business basically. So, you need to have those 
management uh, competencies also. And this we have the decision making and personal management. I, I think this is very very important because uh, you know it's very important for a person to take decisions, uh, especially for an entrepreneur. Some people are not normally taking decisions, but you cannot survive you know while in entrepreneurship. You have to take a decision almost on a daily basis, and then managing the personal. You have a lot of people working under you. They are skilled, semi-skilled, unskilled, managerial, supervisor. So you need to deal with all of them. You should have that that capability to. manage all the personnel the second is the production and the processing knowledge in case you are running a factory or a or a or a manufacturing let us say an enterprise uh, then what is happening in your in your factory you should know what is happening over there about the machines about the processes because if you know all the things then your labor cannot be fool you but if you have no idea then your labor they can always be fool you it's always very important that the person the entrepreneur should know what is happening in his enterprise then the financing abilities that means from where to get the money for your business uh, for a term loan working capital loan lot of things basically so from where to generate the money he should know all this uh, different different uh, you know uh, 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 areas then the marketing capabilities how to market basically that is also very required okay now uh, let me discuss uh, something about the intrapreneurship we have been talking about the entrepreneurship with the e now this is the intra or the intrapreneurship with the i entrepreneurship is a process in which innovative products or the processes are developed by creating an entrepreneurial culture within an existing organization you see some people are not able to become the entrepreneurs but they have those entrepreneurial qualities but due to certain reasons certain constraints they may not be able to become the entrepreneurs but they possess all those qualities of an entrepreneur that vision that uh, you know uh, goal setting and all those the thing they have so suppose they are working in in an organization they are working as an employee so if they exhibit those qualities of an entrepreneur while being in a job those creativity innovativeness all those things so they become they can become entrepreneurs so if you are running an organization a, a business organization you can create a culture within your within within your organization that your employees they become the entrepreneurs they can also contribute significantly by giving all their creative and, and you know innovative inputs so comparing uh, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship the commonalities are both focus on the innovation innovation is important both in the entrepreneurship and in the entrepreneurship uh, both focus on value added products or services and both require investments in the activities that are more risky than the normal because when we talk of the innovations we talk of the creativity you have to invest something in the risky activities but you know if you get the returns also very nice you know later on this is uh, a table which uh, shows a distinction between the entrepreneur and then the entrepreneur so an entrepreneur risks the capital of the parent company because he is working as an employee he take the the funding from from the from the company in the case of an entrepreneur he risks his own time and investment then for an entrepreneur it is a corporate entrepreneurship it is because he is working in a corporate sector and it is like a corporate entrepreneurship in the case of entrepreneurship it is an individual entrepreneurship an entrepreneur restores growth and innovation in a slow growth company so if the company is uh, uh, let us say growing very slow you get a very good uh, team of people who come and who come and join your your organization and they are all let us say very innovative very creative people they are like in you know, uh, entrepreneurs so they can boost up your company in the case of entrepreneurship it is uh, developmental it creates something out of the nothing uh, in the case of entrepreneurship the enemy is the corporate culture uh, because you uh, suppose you are very creative and very innovative you want to do a lot of things in, in the company but other people may try, may try to pull your pull your uh, pull your legs down so that that thing is there whereas in the case of entrepreneurship the enemy is the market an entrepreneur has access to the company's funds facilities and the support uh, in the case of entrepreneurship uh, or in the case of an entrepreneur he uses his personal wealth or support from the outside sources in the case of an entrepreneurship there is no ownership because he is working as an employee basically and he is not completely independent he has some independence but not completely uh, completely independent in the case of an entrepreneurship he is uh, com- he, he has got complete ownership and is completely independent 
okay we go to the uh, concluding slides uh, you see we were talking of the vision as one of the competencies of an entrepreneur so where does a leader's vision come from to find your vision you must listen to four voices the first is the inner voice the vision starts from the within and do you know what your life's mission is if what you are pursuing in the life doesn't come from the depths of who you are and what you believe you will not be able to accomplish it so you must listen to your inner voice the second is the unhappy voice where does the inspiration for the great ideas come from from noticing things which do not work you see there are many things which are which are not working properly and they can be source of correcting them you can set up a business in which you correct a lot of things which which are not working working let us say properly so discontentment with the status quo is a great catalyst for a vision in case you are discontented in case you are not happy i think that is sign of progress basically that means you want to do a lot of things and you are not content with the present circumstances you must remember that no great leader in the history has fought to prevent the change so change is imminent so we should always flow with the change the third is the successful voice nobody can accomplish great things alone if you want to lead yourself to greatness you should find a good mentor and advisor that is i think very important the importance of like a guru basically guru uh, means like if you want to set up a business set up an enterprise think of a guru in the field of let us a business arena who is a very successful let us a person successful entrepreneur and then just try to follow what he is doing basically i think that is very important and the last is the higher voice uh, do not let your vision be confined by your own limited capabilities because sometimes we think that we have a limited capability but we have immense capabilities you know so a truly valuable vision must have the god in it only he knows what you are really capable of we have seen lot of people who were absolutely nothing but they rose like 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 a phoenix you talk of dirvayam bani who was just nothing rose like a phoenix so people have infinite potential it is uh, for you to you know just trust in somebody trust in your in inner self or the god or something you know and then try to do you know your business basically so i think that is all with this i thank you very much in case you want to go more into the details you can refer to the e contents of this books thank you so much